I uh, just thought I'd give you a quick view of how the scaling works to answer your question. So I'm going to use the whiteboard. Um, what you have with... Oh, that is my plan for Abingdon Springhead Rowing Race. Um, <laughs> let's get out of that and create a new whiteboard. Right, now, what you have in uh, app service is... Let's imagine that you've got uh, three servers. Each one will have an operating system, that's Linux in your case, um, a platform like IIS or in your case Docker, and then the actual application which in your case will be wrapped up in a Docker image. So that's what you get on the VM. And if you've scaled out to three instances, then you'll have an operating system Sorry, the operating system will be Windows. It will be Docker, which will be the platform, which will allow you to... Sorry, the operating system will be Linux. Docker will be the platform, and then the application on the top. And um, let's imagine you've got another one of these. Operating system. Docker and your application. And, of course, your application is connected via the network to a load balancer which is called an ARR load balancer. ARR stands for application request routing. It's part of IIS actually and in the old days it's something that we used to do with it. Um, but let me just give you a sort of a view of what happens when let's imagine that you've ma that you've um, scaled out. So this will have a uh, connection to the internet and it's called a PIP, a public IP address. Um, let's draw the internet in blue and right on the connection to the internet is the PIP itself. And then we might have a user on the internet. Uh, let's do them in green. And they've got a computer. And let's imagine that they send an HTTP request to this endpoint. So this endpoint will have a name, like for example it might be kanos.com, for example, that might be what you call it. So they generate, uh, let's do it in red, let's generate an HTTP request here. And then what will happen is that will go to kanos.com. I'll pick this up. I'll go to kanos.com. It'll hit this public IP address. It will then be passed on to the application request uh, routing load balancer. And at that point, an algorithm will run. And that algorithm will take some information from the um, from the client, like um, I can't remember the exact stuff it takes, but I think it takes the source IP address the protocol and the port and it takes the destination the protocol and the port and all those numbers get plugged into an algorithm and that results in a selection of one particular instance of the application so that request might get routed to let's just say it gets routed to that one there and then what will happen is a new, uh, what should we do this in red? Let's do this in red. We will then have a cookie generated which specifies the app, the instance of the um, VM which was um, selected. So that goes uh, so that. Z. Let's get that thing. My mouse. That goes back to. That's a cookie that lives on this machine. So now, every time an HTTP request comes from this machine, let's draw that in red. Let's get a new HTTP request. It knows where to go because the cookie tells it. So it comes up here, and this thing says, "Well, I've already rooted." For this particular uh, user who's turned up with this cookie, I'm routing to this instance. And then if we had a different user, let's draw that one in blue, shall we? 
Let's have another user here. With another machine. And uh, let's have them with a initial HTTP request. And that's going to come in like this. Hit that pip. Go into the application request uh, routing load balancer. It will run this algorithm here come up with an answer and let's just imagine that it sends it to this machine it will then generate a cookie and it will send that cookie to the machine itself so that the next time the machine generates an HTTP request the cookie identifies whoops I didn't do that very well did I Let's just see if we can get it all together. Oh, I'll rub that out and try it again. Let's see if I can draw this all as one entity. Right, and then uh, the cookie identifies where it should go, so it comes up, hits the pip, comes into the application request routing load balancer, and it knows where to send it, so it sends it. Here, so you've got this stickiness of the session. Now, as far as the CPU utilization is concerned, what will cause us to scale up and introduce another server operating system Docker application? And now that will be connected into the application request routing load balancer. What will cause us to do that? And that can be based on some metrics, and I'll show you those metrics. Um, uh, in here. So, yes, I've been playing around with this um, sort of scale out plan. And here, look, we've got a scale rule. This scale rule says. We'll do time aggregation by finding the average of the time. So if you had lots of time slices, we'll take the average of the time slices. And we'll look at the metric, and you can the metrics you can choose are CPU, CPU percentage, memory percentage, disk queue length, disk HTTP queue length, data in or data out, total amount of data in, total amount of data out. Almost everybody chooses CPU percentage because it's something which is easy to understand. And the time, the, the grain, you know, the granularity of looking at this is we look at it once a minute to see what the CPU percentage is. And we're using average, so it's going to be the average over one minute. Um, so, and if that is greater than, in this case, 20% for five minutes or longer, then our operation is to increase the count of the total number of servers by one. And then that, so that was a scale operation. So let's imagine that we were at, let's imagine we're monitoring all of this. We're at 20%, there's no need to scale. We're at 20% average CPU utilization, there's no need to scale. Let's draw another picture on the whiteboard just to get the idea of that. So let's create new, there it is. So if we've got uh, two servers, and here's a graph and our average CPU utilization is 10% uh, um, then there's no need to scale so then another another time period goes past there's no need to scale because we're still at 10 at 10 percent but then if we hit 20 percent our time aggregation goes by and we're still only Sorry, I've just been drawing extra machines there, haven't I? Um, just, just, just done a bad job of explaining that. Sorry, let me do that again because uh, we have got two machines. We've got a graph that shows our CPU utilization. It's currently at 10%. There's no need to scale. When we then go up to 20%, there's no need to scale until this time period is greater than five minutes and once that happens we will scale up by another node because that's what I wrote into the rules if we then carry along like this then nothing will happen we can have a scale down rule as well I should have done that really in red look 
we can have a scale down rule, and the scale down rule might be when we hit 5%. So let's imagine we go down to 5%, but we will not scale down until we've had 5% for 5 minutes, or for greater than 5 minutes. And that will cause us to then scale down, so get rid of one of the CPUs. Let me just fill that gap in that I've made. Um, and we can be doing this, you know, sort of scale. Oh. Red, red. We can do this scale up, and this is what it's really going to look like, isn't it? It's going to be this kind of thing. And we know that any time that we're above that line, that 20% line, for greater than five minutes, that's when we're going to scale up. And if we had another, we could have another rule for 5% um, for greater than five minutes, and we'll scale down. What do we scale by? Let's imagine that what you did when you set this up was you said this was going to be an S1, which is 1.75 gigabytes and uh, 100 Azure compute units. Th this number here is just a way of comparing one CPU with another CPU. There might be different generations of CPUs, if you know, um, Xeon and, I don't know, Eon, I can't remember what they all are. Um, but it's a way of comparing one. So if you had an, if if you were to compare that machine with a machine which had 200 ACUs, then the 200 ACU machine has got twice as much compute power as the 100 ACU machine. But if this um, machine, if your initial setup specified an S1 machine, then every scaled-up option that you create will also produce an S1. So let's imagine you went out to a maximum of five nodes, you'd have five S1s. And then as you scale down, you've removed them, like that, like that, like that, like that, but they'll all be S1s. So you can't, one thing you can't do, let me just sort of say, you cannot do this, this is a no entry sign, you cannot have an S1 as your base machine and then let's just say a P1 V2 as your set, as your second scale up machine, and then uh, a P2 V2 as your third machine. You can't do that either. It's always going to be if it's an if it starts as an S1, then the new machine will be an S1. So let's get rid of that. This will be an S1. Get rid of that. This will be an S1. Okay. Hopefully that explains it. Cheers. I wasn't recording that.